So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I got an internship at LinkedIn this summer, a uh, software engineering internship that is. First, I'll be talking about the what I'm getting, all the good, fun perks that there is for being an intern at LinkedIn. Second, I'll be talking about the process from beginning to end, the entire process of LinkedIn recruitment for the intern programs. Third, I'll show you my resume, I'll go through it, and I'll explain why I put everything, and maybe you can take some inspirations or some ideas from it. And fourth, I'll just be talking about this entire recruitment process, what helped me, and what might help you if you're looking for a software engineering internship. So, let's get right into it. So, what everyone wants to know here is, what are all the good perks? This summer, 45 an hour. On top of that, I'm getting $2,000 a month for housing stipend because the whole internship is remote, unfortunately, this year. On top of that, they'll be giving me all like random expenses, I guess you can say. For example, like $1,000 to spend on a chair or on a table, work from home experience. Also $50 a month for Wi-Fi, again, part of the work home experience. A remote internship is actually very different from my in-person internship because normally LinkedIn provides corporate housing, events, and all that good stuff, free food uh, for interns when their internship is in person. But because the internship is remote this year, they are you know, balancing that out with, with like the housing stipend and the chairs and the tables and the Wi-Fi that I talked about previously. So those are all the good stuff. The internship program lasts three months, well, 12 weeks, which is three months uh, from the start of June to the end of August. Let's get on to the process. So what was the process from beginning to end? I'll go through like a timeline here. I was actually lucky that a recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn for a position for LinkedIn. And he reached out, we were interested if you wanted to apply to the position. And considering I was actually looking for uh, internships that summer, I obviously applied. And so that was around the beginning of January. So this was around the 15th of January when the recruiter reached out. Thank you, Ugo for your camera, cameraman skills. So just to recap, the 15th of January, this recruiter from LinkedIn reached out for the position as a backend system and infrastructure engineer intern at LinkedIn. And I applied to that job the day after. And a couple of days later, I received the first round. The first round for a lot of these tech companies is just a hacker rank, which is basically some coding challenges. So I got that like two days after I applied to LinkedIn and it was just a couple questions. I don't quite remember what the questions were, but I remember, I, I remember doing them really bad. A week later, uh, LinkedIn contacted me again. So this was around end of January and they were, they were saying that they were excited uh, to be moving on to the next stage. So then the next stage was a coffee chat with the recruiter that reached out to me. And in this coffee chat, basically the recruiter was just telling me about LinkedIn, about their company, about what they do, like what is the, what is the culture, what, what do interns do at LinkedIn. It was a really informal, uh, in, informal chat with the recruiter. He also asked me what my interests were, were in terms of back end, front end. After that, I was set and programmed for my final round of interviews. Mid-February, these final rounds consisted of two interviews. One was behavioral and one was technical. The behavioral one was with a manager from the systems and infrastructure engineer team at LinkedIn and basically he went through my resume and asked me a couple stuff from there. He also explained what he his team does at LinkedIn questions. It was very it was like a formal but kind of informal chat as well with the recruiter talking about what I like, what he does, you know, that back and forth. And the hour long technical interview was with a software engineer at LinkedIn. Uh, he was actually really young. He was like only about two years older than me. He probably just graduated from college. I know that because I stopped his LinkedIn. So basically the interview consisted of two questions. One was a very theoretical question on hash maps. So how do they work? What are they? What are their uses? Why are they good? And then the second one was a question on binary search. That was the process. After that interview, I was contacted about a week and a half later. Uh, telling me that they wanted to give me the position and then I talked with the recruiter again I talked with the team manager, which is uh, was like basically congratulating me and uh, welcoming me to their team and explaining what the projects I'm going to be doing this summer and yeah, that was the whole process from beginning to end of the uh, of the recruitment It was around a month a month and a half, which is pretty short considering most processes take several months, but I got lucky because the recruiter re reached out to me. That first part, which is normally the longest part, got accelerated. So onto my resume, let's go. Okay, so here, I think I'll be posting my resume so you can see it. I don't have a lot of experience. Uh, this is actually my first internship. So a lot of the stuff may not like apply to you, but I have my name, 
obviously College of Engineering, also student athlete, which is I think is a big part of uh, me. So I have like a description of me, so like what I'm looking for, and also like a um, small line describing uh, one of my big accomplishments in swimming. So going down, we have education. Basically, I have my degree, which is X as everyone knows from the title of my videos. I have my GPA, which is a 3.4 or something. Over here on the second line, I have relevant coursework. So all the bunch of CS classes that I've taken to the, to the day. So going on to software projects are from my CS classes at Berkeley. So this Git lib version control system. So basically we implemented a modified, like simplified version of Git, the lines of action game. And we'll have all the description there, you can read it. And then the website design, I designed a website for my family-based uh, enterprise, which was called Estigat, which is very, not a big deal, but I put it there as well because I don't have any experience. I, in the below, I have something called pre-experience, which is not technically any experience in the field I want to study, which is software engineering. So I have like accounting intern. I was just helping out in sales, accounting, marketing from a chocolate factory in Madrid called Eureka. And uh, also I was like a math tutor for my friend. In terms of skills, I put all like the software languages I know. So I know Java and Python, and I should know C, but I don't know it that well. So I put knowledgeable in C, SQL, Scheme, which is just a language that no one uses, uh, CSS and HTML. I also put this line of parallelism and all a bunch of other stuff you can see which was specific to the role in my internship So I kind of modified this resume a tiny bit to match the role that I was applying to and I've been playing the piano and violin for many years So I'm experienced there and I put it obviously in my resume So we've talked about the perks the process my resume and finally I'll give some tips if you're looking for a software engineering internship as well and what helped me during the process So some tips I have for people that are applying to a software engineering uh, internship like me. First of all, don't give up. Uh, I probably applied to so many and I got rejected from all of them or ghosted, like over a hundred more than that. And it's just like a thing you just have to apply and keep on applying, keep on applying because you really only need one internship. So until you get that one, just keep on applying and then just keep spamming those apply buttons. Tip number two, like once you get a interview, you should definitely practice it a lot. So like all the different websites to practice, I use lead code a lot. So just go through the lead code. If the company is on there, go through all those questions and make sure you practice them. Also try and practice them in an interview environment. So for example, in my, in my technical interview for LinkedIn, I never actually got the answer that the recruiter was looking for, but I was able to talk through what I was thinking. I was able to come up with a solution myself. And I think that was from a lot of practice of doing it and for every question I was solving on the code, trying to talk through it, trying to think of why it works, why it doesn't work, what other solutions could you have? And all of that, it just, it, it builds up and it's a skill that you use in your interview. And it's really important that you practice that because coding by yourself is a lot different than coding uh, to someone else like watching. Third, basically the first one, don't give up, apply a lot. And I'm sure like if you're looking for one, it's gonna come and like you're gonna get it. So like, don't give up. Yeah, and that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions about the whole process, about LinkedIn, about anything really, leave a comment down below or send me a DM on Instagram if you want. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye. Life is good. And the hour one interview was an hour long, obviously. <laughs> no! Yeah, pretty bad.